episode something. I don't remember this one, so <clears throat> maybe we'll stop doing that. I remember I won't say. Yeah, <laughs> but welcome back. And today I will be eating Chipotle. Yes. Sponsored by Chipotle. Sponsored yeah. by Chipotle. And it's possible that this could turn into one of those Nikocado avocado <laughs> things. And yeah, we, could, yeah. <laughs> we should really consider that because it seems to be more popular than this. But but I did have something that I wanted to ask you because oh, this yeah. morning I was drinking a cup of coffee. This is a physics question for Louis. Mm -hmm. Should just be a little quick answer that he can give me on this. Mm -hmm. But I was drinking a cup of coffee. Or rather, I had made a cup of coffee and it was sitting on the counter mm -hmm. with the intent to drink it. And I wanted it to be as warm as possible when I drank it. Mm -hmm. And so I decided... It doesn't really matter what I decided to do with it, but I was considering either adding heavy cream at that moment when I had finished the cup <laughs> or waiting until right before I drank it. Mm -hmm. And the physics aspect is, does the heat transfer out of the cup more quickly? And would I have a lower temperature overall if I add the cream before waiting 10-ish minutes to mm -hmm. actually drink it or right before I drink it? What, what's yeah. your take on that? So... In terms of the actual like material you're adding to it, mm -hmm. like the heavy cream is going to have the same, like, te like, like the heavy cream has the same like temperature and like heat capacity or whatever. Mm -hmm. So even if the like regardless of the temperature of the coffee, the cream itself will have the same effect on it. Yeah. In terms of like the energy rather than like the temperature. Mm -hmm. But I guess if, it, if there's slightly more liquid in it, it would be like there'll be more contact with the side of the glass or something. Mm. But it so be like a very marginal difference. Okay. So if I added the cream before, it would cool down faster. Only because there's like a, a few millimeters more of contact between the cup and the liquid. And so... But is, the, the, within the liquid itself. It would be yeah. Fine. And so is there no difference due to the heat or just the overall temperature of the liquid being a lot hotter? Is it not transferring energy out more quickly than it would? Oh, yeah. I guess if it is hotter, there's more steam and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that that will actually change it. Yeah. Okay. So that's okay, the yeah. reason why mm -hmm. it is overall best to wait, or it'd be best to do it sooner if you um, if oh, like the, the coffee being that's right. the coffee being cooler would transfer. No, that's less right. Heat. So yeah, there's yeah. there's a reason for both ways because the liquid would be would have oh, more oh, volume yeah, if yeah. you add the cream. That, that that was just like a like a technically there would be a difference, but mm -hmm. like it'd be so minor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, you making it cooler initially would yeah slow down the overall transfer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That is good. Mm -hmm. That's what I, is that what I suspected? No, mm -hmm. I wasn't sure. So I didn't mm -hmm. add it until I was about to drink it. Yeah. And I, I don't think we would add a cooler coffee. <laughs> it would probably only be like a couple of degrees regardless. Yeah. But in terms of like a coffee and drinking it immediately, mm -hmm. like a couple degrees is somewhat substantial. I, I, I guess between yeah. like 83 mm -hmm. and 81 mm -hmm. degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. it's not mm -hmm. Yeah. But like you wouldn't notice, but. Mm. It's hard to say if you know, say maybe. I, mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how many degrees it would actually be. Regardless, I made the wrong call physics wise. Sure, yeah. And you did confirm that. Good. Yeah. And it didn't have any effect. On and the, it didn't have any effect, yeah. 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 <laughs> but it was just an interesting idea. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> today, we are doing, or I guess I'm doing something a bit different. Like with the overall day, I as well as you are going to be playing Valheim later. Mm -hmm. And so we're kind of just doing it in the middle of the day yeah. on a weekday, which... Breaking tradition. Breaking yeah. tradition, yeah. Normally it's at night. Rebels, yeah. <laughs> I think the reason that we're doing it is because Marky's home all day mm -hmm. and he has COVID. Oh, yeah, I was going to so, say. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice. So he's just home all day and is nice. playing regardless. Mm -hmm. And we may as well. Did he get covid Recently, or is that the buddy was sick with? He was sick with something else and then got COVID. <laughs> and nice. we should be wearing masks right now because maybe I brought it back. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, not really. <laughs> but we should wear masks for the other people in the house. That's, yeah, that's what people them, would yeah. want us to do. Yeah, yeah a year ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's an interesting situation where I think I'm going down a little bit more of a path of not working as hard during the day and just doing mm -hmm. kind of 
not <laughs> what you're doing exactly, but just not nearly as bad. As yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but more along that those lines yeah. of like just kind of doing what I wish during the day. Mm -hmm. And there is something nice about it. Mm -hmm. Like it definitely feels very good. And I'm wondering how sustainable it will be. That only time will tell with that. Mm -hmm how sustainable it is yeah. but it is a very pleasant thing like if it is sustainable yeah. that seems very pleasant yeah the, the good thing about it is that it's pleasant but the bad thing is that there's potential that you'll do nothing yeah which i, I did a decent mm -hmm. amount like i for anyone who was unaware or everyone should be unaware actually um my new idea is to start up a drink brand and that's all that i'll say in this episode Ooh, until the episode where we have the drinks in oh, their finished form yeah yeah that's all I'll say. Yeah. The mysterious drink. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But yeah. uh, that's what I've been working on. And I mm -hmm. did some decent work today and changed some ideas that I had and mm -hmm. figured out more of a plan for what to actually do and how it would be feasible. Nice. So I did that work in the morning, got up relatively early, mm -hmm. which I like. I really do enjoy getting up early and mm -hmm. having just that morning to mm -hmm. do whatever I wish. Yeah, I've been pretty good about not not letting my sleep schedule get too bad. Yeah. I, I think something I've noticed with, um, like, trying to... Because my, my general idea is, like... Or, like, like a, a general, like, goal... Or not goal, like... Sort of the way I want to live my life temporarily, at least, is to mm -hmm. not, like, have too many, like, set things that I need to do. And just, like, to mm -hmm. kind of just, like, do whatever I want. And some of it will be, like, fun projects and things. But one of the things I've noticed is, like, as I'm getting less interested in just, like watching videos on the internet or something i feel like i get kind of bored at night and just mm -hmm. end up wanting to go to bed earlier yeah which is just like a convenient thing of like that is good the more like the earlier earlier in the day you are more likely to just have energy because the sun is shining type of thing yeah and why so, do yeah. you think you're losing interest in watching videos yeah i don't know i, I think part of it, i have that uh, extension because I, I mostly like watch youtube and stuff mm -hmm. i got some extension on google chrome that um oh, yeah. gets rid of like the recommendations and stuff mm -hmm. And it's, it's kind of a funny thing where it's like, it is a very like, almost like a childish thing of like, I'm just like putting this on my computer so that I can't use mm -hmm. recommendations. And it's like, mm -hmm. it does just kind of work where it's like, mm -hmm. there's no temptation when there's no, like, it's just like, I could go and change the settings or something. But like, the fact that the recommendations aren't there, I realized like, I didn't really want them anyway. Yeah, you, you just don't have this thing dangled in front of you yeah. every time you check YouTube. Yeah. So have you noticed any downsides to that at all i don't know like the, i guess one downside is that i don't like find as many new subjects or something or, mm -hmm. like new channels that might have a good video or something yeah and i don't know it's, it's one of those things where it's like it's hard to know if any choice is good but i definitely feel like it's like i feel less like sucked into youtube if it's just like i watch one video and then there's no like up next or anything like that yeah and i just like i end up like reading more and like Doing things that are a little bit more varied than yeah. just being stuck on YouTube, you know? That is nice. Mm -hmm. I, like, the thing is, I would consider downloading it, but I almost don't use YouTube that much. I mostly use Spotify and mm -hmm. just have this feed of podcasts that I've subscribed to. Mm -hmm. And then I just add the ones that sound interesting to, like, my list to watch later mm -hmm. and then watch those. And that tends to be yeah. most of my media. Mm -hmm. And if yeah, I and the same the same thing that helped me isn't like you don't have a problem of watching too much YouTube, so it's not yeah. like a you, you wouldn't get too much benefit out of this. It might, yeah. might just be a detriment to you. Yeah, because when I do yeah. use YouTube, it is because I have time to kill when it wouldn't be convenient to do anything else. Like if I'm mm -hmm. sitting waiting for my car to have an oil change, I'll just pop onto YouTube and see what's there that could entertain me or interest me for mm -hmm. like the fifteen to twenty minutes that I'm waiting. Right, and that is my main use of it. Or I will be looking stuff up specifically, yeah. like trying to learn something or figure something out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But that is a probably mm -hmm. good tool that a lot of people could have on their thing. Yeah, if it's like quite, if it's the issue that you have. Yeah. The thing is, a lot of people probably use too many different social media things. Mm. And also, this is only works for, um, I'm guessing it would only work on like a, like the desktop YouTube. If you're using your phone. You it's like a Chrome it. extension. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I, I don't know if you can do those on the phone, but... Yeah, I mean, definitely want to work on, like, TikTok or Instagram or however many things people usually use. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure most people use multiple ones. Mm -hmm. well, and it's like they, they wouldn't really be able to escape. Yeah, the whole thing with TikTok <laughs> is that it is just an algorithm. Yeah. And there's not really too much of, like, searching Oh, yeah, I guess stuff, the other so... 
There like is that would just yeah, destroy yeah, yeah. TikTok, basically. Yeah, yeah. you just gonna use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But how I chose have... a good thing to be addicted to. Yeah, that is good. <laughs> so with YouTube out of the, or it's not out of the picture completely. You still use it from time to time. Yeah, yeah. What would you say? Like, what does your day consist of? Like, because you've been doing the farming a bit, but how much time does that really take? <laughs> not much at all. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't want to get into like the specifics of my day. Yeah. It's, it's too much. That's another thing of like, mm -hmm. I don't want to just like define and like commit to like, this is what I see as my normal day or something. Yeah. Like I, I wake up at a certain time and I do various things. I see. So it's so varied that it's like undefinable. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I'm also like in a transition where it's like, mm -hmm. I'm just finishing up school. So I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't have like a set schedule yet, but um, that's true. You did actually finish that like three or so days ago. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. But also just generally, like, I'm not like. Kind of the idea of not having like a concrete goal yeah. that I want to impose on myself. I don't want to just like say like this is what I'm going to do each day and then think as I'm doing it, it's like, oh yeah, I guess I told her I to do this, so I should probably keep doing it, <laughs> everything. It's yeah, like, no, that's true. Th th that's like just not a like, it, it doesn't gain too much to like explain what I do. Yeah. No. Or to like decide on my, like decide what I do almost. That is, yeah. that is a fair thing. I do. But, but at least before I've like established what I'm doing. Like. Yeah. If I like do this for like a few weeks and realize every day I, you know, eat lunch at this time or something, mm -hmm. that could be a thing that I set down. Of, like, yeah. This is one of the things I do. But like right now, it's, it's too it's too hard to like establish. Yeah. I think that for me, I do varied enough things, although they might some things might be in the same vein. Like today, what I did was looked more into the regulations regarding selling certain mm -hmm. products and actually looking into finding companies that package products and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that's very different from what I was doing two days ago where I was physically mixing the drinks and like testing them out. Mm -hmm. Of unknown uh, Exactly, contents. yeah, the unspecified <laughs> drinks that no one's going to know about until the time is right. But it's it was kind of the same thing almost. Like it was just classify like if i had to classify it almost just classified as or i guess that's easy just working on the drink company mm -hmm. yeah but it hasn't really like even when i am working on the drink company my time is still being spent doing a similar activity that's part of a certain part of life <laughs> which is just trying to sustain myself your future self my future self <laughs> yeah you yeah, you no, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like a decent <laughs> part of me sustains my present self just by like picking up Chipotle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot of me, most of the time that I spend, I think, is to sustain my future self. Mm -hmm. And I like doing that because me doing that in the past has led to me being very easily able to sustain my present self. Mm -hmm. And that's been very pleasant. But... Mm -hmm. It does beg the question of how much time is like too much time and what other classifications of activities are worth <laughs> doing besides because you need to sustain your present self in order to do anything. Mm -hmm. So that seems pretty worth doing. Yeah. Sustaining the future self makes some sense because mm -hmm. it makes the sustaining the present self possible. Mm -hmm. Obviously, or you don't want to spend. Yeah. yeah, obviously, you don't want to spend all your time doing that. But mm -hmm. what other classifications have we yeah. got? So I would say one example or like one stipulation or whatever is that the classifications are just how you look at it mm -hmm. whereas like <clears throat> you see the chipotle as sustaining your present self because mm -hmm. you're hungry or whatever mm -hmm. but you can also see it uh, like sustaining your future self where it's like mm -hmm. if you didn't eat that you could survive for a few days without eating mm. yeah I and guess so it's like when i was saying present i meant like over the next day or two like right and so it's like like it means whatever you, you want kind of mm -hmm. it's like it, it really matters is like how you think about it and it's like mm. if everything you do you think about your present self and it's like doing this creative thing is sustaining my present self rather than that creative thing could also be helping your future self because you make money from it or something. Mm -hmm. So it's like the classifications are almost an illusion that you make your own, like you make yeah. through like what you think of it. Well, the, I, they so, could still yeah. be applied. Like you don't have to classify it into mm -hmm. one thing specifically, but mm -hmm. it's almost like it has these attributes of it sustains your present self. It sustains your future right. self. Yeah, yeah. There's like the objective, like, like what the end result is yeah yeah so yeah, i don't know there's a lot of different ways of doing it like yeah but what there's are... almost like two different like like maybe like a binary sort of thing where it's like mm -hmm. everything you do is either 
helping your present self or your future self or something. It's not really true. Like there's could be not helping anything. You're helping yeah. someone else. But I, I don't know. It feels like the um, like helping your future self is sort of like a I see it as like a necessary evil, mm-hmm. where it's like you're not really benefiting from it because by the time you're benefiting from it the person who did the action has changed into your future self or whatever yeah but it's at the same time it's like you need to be doing it because otherwise you'll die in a few days or a year or something someone else will die in a few days yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. (laughs) but it feels like you'll die yeah 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 but what i guess what i was asking was what are what do you think are some of the other classifications of time Mm. because there's like, I can think of a few that I engage in, like, enjoying myself mm-hmm. slash, like, relaxing, I guess you could say. Mm-hmm. But what yeah. else is there? Because that seems like a very simple, oh, yeah. like, there are three things to do. <laughs> I feel like there must be more. Yeah. I, I think it's easiest to, like, put it in, in the, like, the, the form of binary things where it's, like, mm-hmm. enjoying versus working or something. Where it's, like... Or enjoying versus not enjoying because you might enjoy yeah. work yeah I, I guess yeah yeah it becomes a little bit too but much we just like, learned what louis thinks about work yeah yeah <laughs> it depends yeah it depends on how, how you define things yeah yeah but i guess it's, it's not too useful to say like enjoying versus not enjoying and then working versus not working because mm-hmm. it gets a little bit too much of like you're not really saying much by differentiating it because there's obviously like there's infinite things like you're either yeah. flying or you're not flying you yeah know? yeah <laughs> but i think it's like it's almost like a useful tool to th- say like it's like suppose enjoyment or like relaxation and work are opposites. Mm-hmm. Then you can put it as like the work is something that you might need to do sometimes, but for the most part, it'd be better if you could just relax more. <laughs> I just thought of um, <laughs> a potential job that people might be doing mm-hmm. where <laughs> that might not be true because imagine yeah. just a woman who has a camera on her apartment <laughs> and it's just her job to go around and relax mm-hmm. in the apartment. Yeah. <laughs> And people just pay for that stream. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah. That, that is true. Because, yeah, it could be, like, it, like the work and the work and relaxation don't have to be opposites if you can find a work that is relaxing. Yeah. Like, just mm-hmm. being on a camera. <laughs> that sounds like a disgusting kind of way yeah. to do it. But but something that surely exists yeah. at this point. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, the thing is, like, yeah, like, what you define as opposites is almost depending on, like, what you think the work is or what the relaxation is. Like, if the re- relaxation has to be... Like sitting on a couch doing nothing mm-hmm. with no camera watching you, yeah. <laughs> then it really couldn't be work if you're not. Yeah. If it requires no action at all. Mm-hmm. But if relax, if relaxation could be like playing a game or something, if you can turn the work into a game, then the work and relaxation aren't different anymore. Yeah. They can be like the same thing. Mm-hmm. So it sort of depends on like what, what things you see in your life that aren't compatible. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, I don't know, if like exercising and, like uh. Like, like, like exercising your body and relaxing your brain are two different things. Yeah. And like if you're at the gym and you have to like force yourself to work out, then you have to like kind of set those things as two different things that you do. But if working out is relaxing to your brain, even though it's working your body, you can sort of do things at, both things at once and like sort of like throw those away and find some new like thing that you're doing when you're going there. Mm-hmm. I guess. So uh, is your... <laughs> Not like you're Getting working too esoteric. towards a, yeah. <laughs> Not like you're working towards like a huge goal, but is your mm. goal kind of to figure out how to make as much of life incorporate the relaxing slash enjoyable mm. aspects and try to incorporate those into whatever work needs to be done to continue sustaining yourself? Yeah, something like, like that's one way of putting it, maybe. Mm-hmm. I, I think a better way of putting it maybe is to like find yeah like decide the things that i need Mm -hmm. and if i need to sustain my future self then i'll try and find things that like qualify for that but don't like butt heads with any of my other things that i don't want to do if like Mm -hmm. i don't want to like serve someone else as like their um underling as like i don't want to have a boss yeah and i also don't want to like do physical labor that's more like worse than a certain level or something yeah and it's like I, i just need to like I guess my goal is to find things that don't, like, don't uh, contradict any of my other things that I want, but go along with, like, the general things that I do want. Mm-hmm. That's, like, what everybody's doing all the time. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guess my idea is, like, to kind of, like, like, set, like, more stringent balance on what I want to do and to find things that are, like, not, <laughs> things that don't go against what I really want to do, mm-hmm. but still sustain my future life or whatever it is that I decide is important. Yeah. And does that 
mean <clears throat> that applies for like a 24 7 kind of thing or is there an acceptable amount of doing something you don't want to do if it's like five percent of your time yeah ideally it would be 24 7 yeah like i, I want to enjoy sleeping or something yeah and it's like, like I, I do enjoy sleeping because i oh, yeah. dream and have cool dreams and stuff oh, yeah and it's like i almost want to find that for like every part of the life that i need to live mm -hmm. of like i need to be eating and i need to be like doing this and that and i almost want to find a way of doing each thing that is enjoyable yeah yeah that makes sense. Yeah. And, and that's the ideal. Like, that's not, yeah. it might not be possible. But. Do you think it's possible? We'll see. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I don't want to commit to whether it's possible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can imagine it being possible. Mm -hmm. Especially, the thing is, I almost know that it's possible. Mm -hmm. In And there are circumstances that lead up to it. Like, potentially, if you put a bunch of work in the present, then your future self could obviously live that life. Mm -hmm. But starting as is, tough to say, like, mm -hmm. if instantly anyone could start doing it. Yeah. Like, it's probably possible, I want mm -hmm. to say. Like, with, yeah. the, with the example of the woman who just, like, puts <laughs> on the camera, like, that right. seems like pretty instantly a lot of women could start doing something pretty easy yeah. like that. As long as it doesn't go against your, like, yeah. your pride as a person. That's true. But I think yeah, also... Yeah, that's true. That depends yeah. on the individual. Yeah. I think one thing that would make it impossible mm -hmm. is if you start to consider, like, your memories of the past as being part of this. Mm. Whereas if you want all your memories to be cohesive mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. to not have any of them go against you, mm. then having the work as like the thing that you got you there, if the work was bad, then it's part of you. Mm -hmm. And you don't really want, like if you want that part of yourself to be good too, or like get cohesive or whatever, mm -hmm. then it's impossible to have that be the solution. Well, in that way, haven't we all already done like mm -hmm. some work or unless we're li yeah. literally a baby? Like, we've already done yeah. some work, and then it's impossible for anyone to start. If if you, like, keep your, uh, the things that you want to, like, uh, like, unmoving or whatever, like, concrete. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, then if you, like, if you view all the years in school as something that had to be bad. Yeah. Then you can never really be happy. Mm -hmm. So I think the key is to, like, find some way to be happy with the things that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. But to also not be, not do things that will make you unhappy in the near future. Yeah. Which I, it's kind of a balance of like, you can change all your your standards to make yourself happy, or you can change your actions to make yourself happy. And it's like, you can't do much about the past. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's just tough to yeah. say, like, mm -hmm. to me at least, not, not if it's worth it, because obviously if I could just start living my life in a way where I never had to do anything I didn't want to do, mm -hmm. that would be very pleasant. I guess what I'm saying is it's tough to know what the risk is of doing that. <laughs> like, yeah. if I did, if I were to truly start doing that. The risk is you might be happy. <laughs> yeah, that's the risk in the immediate future. But is it possible that three months down the line, mm -hmm. I find myself in a really bad situation where, like, if one of the things I want is food... Mm -hmm. I can no longer get that without doing, like, grueling labor. Right. You know? It's yeah. tough to say. Yeah. Th th that's why it is a little bit of, like, a... You need to be in, like, a comfortable position before you start... Yeah. Like, removing things that you mm -hmm. force yourself to do, almost. So, for the everyday Joe, they should almost, like, focus yeah, on getting themselves in a future position where they could do it? Or what's the best I don't thing, know. you think? I think I only really have a good reference of, like, my own life. Mm-hmm. The, like, if, if I was in a, the position of the average show, yeah. I, I might have, like, built, like, a general idea of what to do. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it's like, I could apply my logic to it, but my logic has all sorts of blind spots because yeah. my dad pays for my rent and this yeah. and that. And it's like, I, I almost wouldn't be able to give very good advice because unless someone was in the same situation as me. Yeah. You know? I guess, yeah, everyone does have the best advice for their exact situation. Yeah. My only advice is to watch YouTube videos about Buddhism. Yeah. <laughs> That's the best I can say. <laughs> but oftentimes, like, people who are in the situation have blind spots because they're living it and they're not observing it from the outside. Right. And so you can't see around some of the corners and stuff. Yeah. And that's why you do psychedelics. Yeah. Because <laughs> then, then you do see outside. <laughs> that is that is one way to do it. How, yeah, how much, I guess, yeah, that is kind of the point of them. <laughs> how much do you think you see, like, compared to what someone else might see looking at your life? Like, do you think you'd be able mm. to get the same quality of advice from doing mushrooms? 
as from someone else looking at what you're doing and saying, here's something you might know. Yeah, it's hard to say. Like you do, like you get a different perspective on things. But it's also like you have more information about your own mind and your own life and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's like you've experienced all of it. Mm-hmm. And like someone that knows you pretty well maybe has like enough knowledge to give you good advice. But I feel like the psychedelics are almost just like you're like you can just be more honest about or like like, like you you lose more of your like um your like preconceived notions about how to analyze things. And then you look at your own life as like a different almost as like more like scrutiny or like less like you're not like being nice to yourself and like forgiving yourself or like like oh i was just doing this or like i was just thinking that i was doing a good thing when i did this bad thing or something and you look at more like objectively almost Mm. as just like but in a very this is just the bad thing i did in a very forgiving way though where you're not like yeah it might not be forgiving it's more just like brutal honesty wow like the psychedelics aren't necessarily like don't don't you realize that it's all okay or something yeah that's part of it yeah yeah it's, it's not necessarily like, like there are like plenty of bad things you can realize about yourself. Yeah. yeah. Or like unpleasant, but feelings. So are there just a bunch of people who <laughs> do this and then like have breakdowns because they've realized something really bad? Like, no, not a breakdown, but like you do, like you can't really hide things from yourself. Mm. But, like psychedelics do, like I would say overall, mm-hmm. they have the potential to be like the best like psycho- psychotherapy you can have because you. Like, can solve all the mind problems that you have. Or not solve all the problems, mm-hmm. but, like, be aware of more of the problems. But there's, like, the two sides of, like, you can be really happy because you realize these things, or you can mm. realize that things are worse than you think or something. So are there just a bunch of stories that, that are going untold of people who have had horrible experiences? No, that, that's what the bad... Or, like, not all the bad trips, but, like, yeah. some of the bad trips are that, and some of the good trips are people, like, have a terrifying experience where they're, mm-hmm. like, angry and sad and stuff, but then yeah. they realize... A week later, they're like, oh, that was the best thing ever. Like, that's exactly what I needed. Yeah. Type of thing. Okay, yeah. Like, when I went to that music festival, I, t- I told about the story a while ago. Yeah. But I, I was just, like, crying. And, and like, yeah. like, a circle of people. From just, bad stuff. They're just from, like, like, sadness, kind of. Yeah. Or it, it, it was it was complicated, but I was just, like, sitting there crying, and I was like, that would have been very embarrassing, but that was exactly what I needed. Yeah. Like, it was just, like, a very, um, like, cathartic sort of experience. Mm. <laughs> well, it sounds like it could be good. To do mm. that stuff. Yeah. But it's, it's maybe like not always enjoyable, but it seems to always be beneficial. Yeah. It, assuming you don't have like a like trauma from it because it's too bad. Yeah. But yeah. but the original thing that I was asking was, is that yeah, going to give you right. as much of a view as someone else looking at you? Yeah, it's hard to say. It's like, still you looking at it. Right. But the, like, the thing is like it's, it's you, but without a lot of your preconceived notions. Mm. And the thing is like anybody giving you advice kind of has their own agenda. Yeah. Even if they don't mean to, they still have, like, what they think is right. Like, if they're Christian and you're doing something that they see as, like, a sin, they might give you good advice, but it will be kind of colored by their mm. idea of what's right and wrong. Yeah. So what you need is the advice <laughs> giver to be untrue. <laughs> right. <so> they, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what would help. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's possible. <laughs> because I'm just thinking of circumstances where just because you're being honest with yourself... Mm-hmm there might be things that you don't even know that right. could have an effect on your life. Like if we told or or say that um, like a baby listened to the podcast and just like, or someone took snippets of the podcast mm-hmm. and listened to the parts where like someone just cut out you saying that out of context, you should live a life where you just do what you want and don't do like minimize the parts that you don't want. Mm-hmm. If the baby only heard that and just didn't know anything else about the world and started doing that, mm-hmm. they might not realize that they weren't included in the group that you were talking about where they have the resources to actually start doing it. Yeah. And they might just not knowing that, even if they took shrooms and were honest with themselves, like that sounds like a good thing. Mm-hmm. They could make a mistake and be stuck after that. Yeah. 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 Like, like getting an inco- incomplete yeah. message that's can just, give you yeah. a bad idea. And yeah. that's just a very simple example mm-hmm. of a time that someone could be lacking some information mm-hmm. obviously because they're a baby but mm-hmm. like i'm sure people in everyday life are lacking a lot of information yeah and they do like jump to conclusions about things yeah yeah that, that definitely happens with the shrooms or like psychedelics in general like people will get kind of weird ideas and get like the mm-hmm. um what's like the spiritual ego or whatever mm-hmm. where people think like they'll do shrooms and think like oh i know so much more than everyone else type of thing <laughs> 
when like the what it's really showing you is that you don't know anymore or whatever. Yeah. But like there is like there's plenty of pitfalls of like like thinking that you know more than you do because you've gotten something that other people haven't or whatever from the shrooms. And it's like there's kind of like a you have to be kind of careful with it where it's like you do get things that you wouldn't have thought of otherwise. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of up to you in your sober mind to re like to decide whether they're true or not or whether they're like worth like thinking about mm -hmm. or if you were just like if you were just high and just had some crazy idea or something <laughs> yeah <laughs> every once in a while there is an idea that probably is just mm. like your brain just finding con connections that aren't there yeah and and that ties into what you were saying in the earlier part of that um diatribe <laughs> yeah what well, it was uh, a really good quote one of my favorite quotes is the wise man knows that he knows nothing right, right. and that's probably one of my favorite quotes that's Mm -hmm. something that i like to impose on other people <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> something that i like to believe is mm -hmm. one of the fewer things or one of the few things that people can even not that no but <laughs> yeah but just one of the things that i like to believe yeah if i believe anything mm -hmm. yeah. yeah but that was it that's yeah. time yeah. for valheim we're a minute and 14 seconds late nice. so mark you know exactly why we're late yes well, when you're listening know, to this. Yeah, you yeah. will know and well, probably just if we don't tell you then you'll know you'll learn yeah hmm. we're speaking to you from the past i guess yeah, yeah. that's good no yeah <laughs> I, i'm angry about what you did when we're about to play valheim yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah give me back the copper marky yeah. all right we'll talk to you or we'll see you guys next time <laughs> thanks for watching yeah